Jeremiah is on our board of directors. He uh, also does a lot of commercial work. And probably the coolest thing is his recent film. Uh, my Dad's Dance Story was shown at the, it's not officially the Cannes Film Festival. Cannes Film Festival has a lot of sort of spin-offs that happen at the same time. But he was picked as top like 10 films to represent Canada. That was the, not short on talent. Yeah. Not short on talent at the Cannes Film yeah, Festival. Yeah, yeah until then. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Congratulations. That's yeah. yeah. fantastic. <laughs> And then we have Todd Jones, a very experienced filmmaker of 20 years, worked at Shaw TV, a very, you know. Now Shaw Spotlight. Now Shaw Spotlight. I was correct you last time you said that one. I was like, right. Spotlight! But I didn't want to do that too, sorry. <laughs> yeah, because I guess it's not just TV now, it's also online. Yeah, uh, it's, we've changed our brand, no one knows about it. We don't even understand it, but we're now Shaw Spotlight. Gotcha. For future references. <laughs> yeah. And then also the winner of our One Minute Mobile Movie Challenge. Wow. <laughs> and last but not least, Levi Hildebrand is a very cool addition. Levi is not of our community, so we'll get to learn a lot about him, I'm yeah. sure. Uh, from Victoria, are you originally from Victoria? Yeah, I'll say I'm from Victoria. You're from yeah. Victoria, okay. So, interesting thing how I first found out about Levi is I graduated with his, well, your, you're married now, right? Your yeah. wife. Yeah. Uh, or your wife. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird for me to say that, but um, but yeah, I found, saw her start post your videos on Facebook, and so Levi has a channel on YouTube, has about over 70,000 subscribers, his views, he's getting over a million views on lots of his videos, yeah. uh, you're doing commercial work, and then your latest film was funded by StoryHive, so yeah. a lot of cool stuff, so I'm looking forward to hear from all, yeah, these three and uh, their experience and what their projects. So again, this is going to be very open. I'll ask questions. You guys can ask questions. If you want, you can ask questions to the audience. The audience can ask questions <laughs> this way. I just want to have a really open conversation about filmmaking, and hopefully we'll get some cool knowledge and experience. Does anyone want to start, or should I start? I'll maybe open, I'll open one up that I'm sort of curious about. All three of you uh, use like different cameras for your projects. One was a red camera, which is one of the top cameras you can use. The other was a mobile phone. So I'm curious, what is your thought process in terms of how you use technology on your films to tell a story? Whoa. Go. Huge. Dang. Wait, so you start yours on a red? Yeah. What, which one? What? I, sorry. Which this wasn't the one, the dentist story, the, the father's dentist story, the, 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 the oh teeth okay. were removed. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Schools, okay. I yeah. remember that one, yeah, because I was like, that was the same as all video content-wise. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> was like, yeah, oh, interesting. There's a relation there. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great, wow. Um, I guess I'll go first. Uh, <laughs> so I shoot with a Sony A6400, I don't know what the familiarity is with that, it's basically like a glorified point and shoot um, that Sony managed to cram like 4K and like 1080, 120 into it. Um, they did that with the A6500 first, which was like kind of the revolutionary camera. And then they just put a flip up screen for vloggers. <laughs> and so I just bought it because of that. Um, and But then I basically spent my whole time filming myself, not in the documentary, obviously, just like setting up a camera, flipping the screen around, making sure that I look good, and then like pressing in the button and saying words, and then going and doing that in a variety of different places. So yeah, for me, it's always about form factor. I shoot with a small camera, with a small little microphone, small tripod, and I just walk around and try and put it in weird places and uh, you know get my story across as quickly as possible. I believe that doc campus wasn't shot with that camera. Uh, half of it was. Well, was it really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot of motion shots. Yeah, I mean, you just you can take that camera and do a lot more with it. Like I use it for YouTube, but you know, you just beef it up with you know some nice prime lenses and stuff and gimbals and everything and you know some good lighting. I liked your. So you did the lighting too. The lighting was really good. No, so that's my business partner. So that was produced through One Island Media. And my business partner is a cinematographer. Okay. He really liked doing music videos until he realized that nobody in the music industry has money. Well, <laughs> starting off anyway, right? Yeah, so, yeah, he took that sort of like guru, pixel counting brain of his, and we're now applying it to sort of environmentally focused films. 
Dan, how, so how long did it take to film the documentary? How many, you know, over what period? Uh, like we probably shot it over the course of a month, but then like another month of pre-production and yeah. stuff leading up to it and then getting the grant and dealing with a producer who doesn't know anything about film. Oh, yeah. that's, that's unique. Yeah. So you didn't produce it yourself then? Uh, well, she was the lead producer because she wanted to tell the story and she reached she out to the, us. Did she get the funding? Yeah, so she yeah. she said, this story hype thing is happening. We had interviewed her recently and she said, I'd like to do this thing. Yeah. We were like, great, sounds awesome. And then she proceeded to like, do nothing and make the most money. <laughs> so it's like, okay, that's fine. Do you mind, like what level of budget? You could uh, range we were funded for twenty eight thousand okay. dollars, and she made eight thousand dollars, <laughs> and we split the rest with also the other subjects of the film. Yeah, um, and she quite literally was in it, and then like failed to respond to some emails and kind of almost sank the ship. And so we were like bailing water constantly. <laughs> we were like, oh my god! So when it was done, we were like. Okay, walk away. Just put it over there. We're done. We made it. So and I hope it that's... was an experience then. Yeah, very unfortunate. Like I wish it wasn't that way because it was a cool project, mm -hmm. but it just like not working with filmmakers can sometimes be the worst part about filmmaking in my experience. Yeah, that was an odd budget low. So it wasn't just tell us. Yeah, so there was a creative BC top okay, up that yeah. they add. I don't know. I think that's through telefilm, it's like a subsidiary of it or something, some government thing that they just add money on top of it. Yeah. How did you afford a red, man? <laughs> Years of uh, work <laughs> building up. Like, well, so I, I started off with a Scarlet, um, Scarlet X. You started off with Scarlet. Well, no, I had cameras before, but that's like... <laughs> it's just like, I, so when I was a wee baby, I pulled out my Scarlet to them. <laughs> you got a yes. grant for a documentary, right? Yeah, so I got a grant for a documentary. That helped me get my first camera, which was um, a Sony. And yes. yeah, this is a well, you know, this is when HD was just coming out. Yeah, and wow. so it's like, oh, I can go digital, and I can go um, 1080p versus 1080i. <laughs> That's amazing. Brilliant. Uh, so I got that camera through my you know, documentary grant. So I had a documentary uh, <coughs> was on E.J. Hughes, who is a landscape painter, mm -hmm. BC landscape oh, painter. Cool. And so we did a documentary um, on the mural that's actually in the convention center. And so is the mural was found in a uh, local hotel, and so we kind of spin Mount Spina, yeah. yeah. And so we got on the ground, uh, we saw this in the news, there's all this controversy because it's Nanaimo and there's drama in Nanaimo. <laughs> <laughs> Tensity! And my, uh, we contacted someone who was really pushing to have a resort. Cheryl Harrison was there. Uh, she was a restorer who works on Emily cars and all sorts of really expensive paintings. Um, and she was advocating, saying, "You have to restore this mural uh, because it's you know E.J. Hughes and his. If you, you know, they were wanting to destroy it, just like trash it because hmm. they didn't see the value in what it was." And she's saying, "Well, if I restore it, it could be worth up to twelve million dollars, right?" Wow. And so we got on the ground floor, kind of talked about the controversy and the drama, and got Telefilm Canada to give us grant to make the documentary. So that's like a year long process, kind wow. of following that's the wild. project. And, and that's how you got that the helped, Scarlet. That helped get me the initial equipment in order to get more work, right. which eventually I got some other projects which helped um, that were large enough that let me kind of basically buy the Scarlet and take not too much money over, you know, the course of a couple of projects. Right. And then over other commercial projects, I upgraded the brain. Wow. Know, until the camera had come out, which is a epic W. But, yeah, you know, I, Generally do small productions, so it's fast. 
Um, oftentimes I don't have tons of time to get my shots or work with, you know, locations. So I, uh, you generally don't think of a red as a the ideal uh, running gun. Yeah, no, that's, that's why I hear. I've never used one, but I hear it's not a running gun. It's not. There. Are, it depends how you set it up. So obviously, it's it's heavy. It's not going to be great for a gimbal mm. unless you have a really expensive gimbal. Yeah, I don't have a really expensive gimbal. <laughs> and even if I did, it would take a lot of time, um, and I'd need more crew to. Well, and it's like a whole set thing. It up like, and do that. if you own a red, then you need to like buy the hard drives to store all the data, and then you need the thing that goes into your computer to translate that data, and then you need a computer like that's a behemoth to edit footage, and then there's so like the whole workflow from like yes, beginning to yeah, end so has you, to change completely. Yeah, you start making your whole workflow more expensive. Exactly. That's why I've just like never touched them. But I'm scared. But the red itself. You know, it does allow you to do a lot of uh, post. Um, it's very flexible. Like grading and everything. So grading and uh, reframing if you need to punch in a bit. Like so, what what is that? Did you like the film that we saw? Like you shot that in what like six K or yeah, so, oh yeah, it's six K. It's just ridiculous. Like, <laughs> and it wasn't in terms of editing. You know, my computer is now. 2013 trash uh, Mac Pro trash can version. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 on the yeah, the Mac Pro trash can. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and it, it's it's still chugging away. Chugging. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, but uh, the hard drives are kind of they're adding up. Seriously, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You you didn't have that problem though with the iPhone. <laughs> no, I didn't use an iPhone. I used a Pixel phone for that one. Oh, okay. And then for the documentary, the, I, the Pixel phone, iPhone, I went the Pixel phone over the iPhone because iPhone shoots um, pretty vivid. So uh, yeah. uh, I use the Pixel because it shoots more, not that it's flat, but a lot more flat, so I can try mm -hmm. to color grade. I know I want to do some lighting effects to it, have the blue and orange, yeah. and I want to have a little more freedom with the color grading, so that's why I want the more of a flat image than the vivid one. The vivid ones, my, my pre-test was, yeah, it was harder to use. Get the look I wanted with the iPhone, so that's why. Yeah. Even though I got the brand new iPhone recently, I still didn't want to. Use the 11 Pro. No, 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 the 10. Sorry, the I just got a 10 recently. Ah, oh, don't you hate that though? Ah, like, it doesn't matter. You had the I, new phone like two weeks ago, and it's already a new phone. <laughs> didn't, didn't care. It doesn't, doesn't bother me. I but the what about the extra super wide? Like, I don't care. It's super wide. <laughs> it's like the, next year, the back is just really covered with. Cameras. Yeah, it's just 17. <laughs> I, I don't like shooting with the phone. Just for the record, I don't like shooting with the phone. It was for the mobile challenge, so you know. It, I, it, it, it's a work tool too, so I don't use the work that tool right. ever. So it forces me to, to get to know it and to use it because if I have to train a volunteer with it, I now know how to use it. So, it so forces, what do you use for your regular? Uh, usually for work, we use a GH5. So the other two docs okay. that you saw, we did, I also did Love Goes Viral, but the husband and wife had a baby and they went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that one. And we also did the Kyla's Bear, Kayla's Bear, the one with the, 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 the late dog yeah. that died and made the bear. So that's all shot. I shot both those. Um, we should use a GH5. Uh, yeah, that's what, man, yeah. I really loved, I had a GH4 before my mm -hmm. camera, and the re almost exclusively the reason why I switched is because of the autofocus. Yeah, I, I, I don't use, still. You probably don't use that much. No, even sure. with the autofocus, they say it's really good, but. <sighs> it's so inconsistent. <laughs> yeah. has, it, has it burnt you before? Or? I, I, I've never used, Here's it. I'll shoot the autofocus, yeah. then I'll do tapes without the autofocus. Yeah, yeah. And I never use the autofocus yet. It's just again, I'm when I'm shooting, I'm always shooting with the iris all like the aperture wide open at 1.7 yeah. if the lens is right. So the depth of field is so big, so the slightest little movement just goes. Yeah, right? you're done. Yeah, and so I, and a lot of other people across our country in, in our shot spotlight world, okay. they shoot the, when they're learning, they had everything on autofocus and oh, just a little. All the time, but that whole thing yeah, is going to be searching yeah. for it. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, there's some ways you're out, outdoors, it's much more reliable, there's a lot more light, right? Yeah, yeah. But so far, everything I've shot is 100% manual focus. Yeah. I just can't stand it not being manual focus. So, I like to be in control of exactly what it is. So, totally. sometimes you don't see a lot of movement because the camera's new, so I'm still learning it, but I'm shooting something next week. So, we're going to have a lot more dolly shots and stuff like that. We're going to bring a dolly in and stuff. So, we'll see what it looks like in the end, but. I'm gonna try some rack focus and stuff like that. So, well, yeah, sorry, question. Oh, uh, I mean, it, 
I don't want to cut off the talk about the That's okay, yeah, but I use a T5, that's all. Yeah. Um, but uh, when you were shooting on the Pixel, mm -hmm. were you using, um, do you have any accessories, gimbals, etc., cetera, uh, or while you were shooting, were you shooting using the like native um, camera app, or did you have some good questions? Um, camera controls? The, the Pixel we have is it had Filmic Pro on it. Okay. And so I set it for shooting. I shot it in. I set it for 2K. So you should. I knew I wanted to punch in for some close-ups. So I shot in 2K. I shot with um, the extra wider aspect ratio, just because I was just really fooling around with this sort of thing, which actually didn't really work because when you punch into 2K and you do the extra extra aspect ratio thing that's what it's still no more widescreen yeah. it actually your vertical wasn't even 1080 it was like 920 so it's like <laughs> yeah. really okay that punching in still degrading my quality i wanted so i could punch in and not do like you're shooting your 6k or whatever yeah, yeah, you can punch in about exactly i was like oh well it's so whatever I'll just, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a phone movie so they're gonna look any different i don't know right yeah. and so that's what i did again I, I shot that i shot 24 frames i shot uh, I kept adjusting the eye. Like, you yeah, have with Filmic Pro that you use, it's a really cool tool because it's no, no longer auto, right? So you can adjust your eye, you can adjust your focus. So some shots had some depth of field. I did a, there's one shot early where it's a close up of her face, she closes the door, the light switches on, and she was dad. And then I did, I did a rack focus from her to the, the father, which is really kind of cool because the camera's this close to the girl. And so I was able to do a rack focus. So I was like, I had my foot finger in the yeah. thing, I went, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> did a few takes of it, right? And so, you know, it was, it was cool, but. As for, I didn't use a gimbal, I had a little tripod, a little tripod thing, I just held my hand, I got a shotgun. It's, it's called a, it's called a uh, pistol, pistol grip. Yeah, yeah. So I had that and I just shot like that, tried to, like it had a little bit of shake to it, I'm like, ah well, it's okay, it's a phone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I was okay with it, like, I was worried on the big screen, I didn't see a lot of shake, but I didn't really see a lot of shake in it, so I'm okay with it, so. Yeah. I, I kept it really simple, yeah. really, really simple. Because I knew mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot of time and I didn't have a lot of help, so simplify, simplify, simplify. Yeah, yeah it's pretty stable down for uh, a phone. Well, I knew if I held my hand, <laughs> it'd be like yeah. this, right? So the, the pistol grip really helped a lot. So I thought about bringing, we have an Osmo. I was going to bring an Osmo from for work. The, for the phone? Or for the phone, yeah, yeah. For, the, for the phone. Mm -hmm. But it just then just, it complicates things, you know, the Osmo doesn't work right or something, so I just, I got rid of that. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, the results were good enough. Oh. I certainly didn't notice any. You know, Shit. if you said yeah. you shot it with an Osmo, I would have been like, "Oh, cool." Looks, yeah. Yeah. It looks like you did. Like yeah. That. Again, the pistol grip's great. Like I just get out of this holding your phone like this. Just something like that was just made it much more convenient, sort of thing. So mm -hmm. then you get there, you get your focus. Okay, good. Because the Osmo would be a little bit heavier, and you'd be so that's why I just didn't bother. Well, and the gimbal's kind of unnatural. Yeah. Like I find the Osmo, it feels like you're constantly like floating or something. Yeah. There's this kind of ethereal feeling about the footage that you get out of them. A absolutely yeah. right. So I wanted to have it more of a. I want to shoot the whole thing handheld. I just wanted to have the. You know, sometimes you add a little jitter to it, it just adds a little more <coughs> intensity to the scene or panic sort of thing. <coughs> Wanted to make it very confrontational and seemed like it was happening really fast. So, yeah. Well, that jump scare. And the jump scare. <laughs> to the jump scare. Next level. Yeah, there's a, there's a saying about my movies that in all my movies, someone dies or someone's trying to kill somebody. Every okay. single one of them. I don't do anything unless somebody's trying to get killed or die. I don't know why. Even my comedies, people die. I, I, I think that's something for your therapist. Mm -hmm. That's like, <laughs> so why do people My wife's quite upset about that too. Like, my wife was like, does a daughter have to bite the thing? <laughs> <laughs> Why is that happening? I'm like, my wife's very, she's a nice, calm, cool, you know, very peaceful lady, and I'm always killing people. <laughs> <laughs> and you make films too, which is. Well, oh, there you go, exactly. Yeah. Well, 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 well yeah. he, he has to do that, otherwise, we might not all be alive right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah as long as the fascination with death stays in. Well, the fascination <laughs> with death, it just. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you do it be funny, too. Of course. Well, you're yes. trying to, you're know, getting make. I thought it'd be really cool. I wanted to make something really not like me, like make something dramatic. People going, oh, it's one of those after school specials. At the end, going, oh, honey, I love you. <laughs> that's what I think. Would it be funny if the daughter's a vampire? <laughs> that's what I did. That's the brainstorm session. That's what it was. I, love it. Oh, I knew I, I started, oh, what if the daughter's a vampire? And that's why you work in the, if you look at the dialogues, like, you know, Oh, Dad, it's almost morning. I have no time for this. I got to get to bed. I'm changing. I'm a monster. Oh, that's right, she is. She yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah, I should have seen it coming. But when yeah, it happened, I was like, God! 
But nothing's better than in the theater and you, you plan for something, you hope you get a reaction. When everybody goes, <gasps> it's like, oh, that's awesome. And then everybody laughs afterwards, but that's, you know, they're all surprised, right? So that's, that's exact, it's kind of cool when that happens, right? So it was, it was kind of exciting when they ever react, so. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a silly film that wasn't meant to be anything more than what it was. Just entertaining. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so for my film, I shot, actually, that was uh, as a client project. And I was called up three days before we had to shoot. And we had an afternoon to shoot it. The whole so you thing? shot? Yeah. Well, I can, I can see the interview part, but all the visuals to you did all that in the same afternoon. I had some B-roll shots, which I had shot. Like uh, nature. Na some nature yeah, shots yeah. that I had specifically shot in the past for myself. Right. So they're just me going up testing my camera. Yeah. Um, because you need, you know, like flowing water, those types of things, you know, test your camera, see how slow mo goes, you know, yeah, all yeah. those things. <laughs> so I had some of those shots, so I was able to incorporate them. And so we had one day to shoot it. Uh, my client was coming, she was flying over kind of in the morning. And, but before that, I, since I heard about three days, you know, before the shoot date, I was able to kind of go and do a quick scout. You know, right, trying, find a spot. trying to find a couple locations. Yeah. Um, we couldn't get a great studio or anything. Not short. Yeah, notice. what were you shooting? She was up against like a uh, canvas or something or something. So I, I actually had to shoot her green screen. I was going to uh, say I knew it was a green uh, screen. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it looked like a green screen. Yeah. This I just I assumed it was. So because yeah, because it's last minute. It's like okay, I can't find a great spot. Uh, Oh, I, I didn't I don't have a good studio or anything. Mm -hmm. You know, the audio was a good nightmare. But uh, yeah, so I shot green screen and then created uh -huh. the scene all yeah. in the background. But it was a one day shoot. And so that's. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the name of your film again? Um, my dad's dentist story. Oh, okay. right there. See, I always thought it was a green screen until yeah. the one you push in one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The background pu pushes in with it perfectly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, maybe it's not a background because it, it looks exactly. Yeah. Look pretty the, seamless. Do you have little, little <laughs> dots in the walls? Do you have track just, motion? Um, no, no. This is this is simpler. This is the power of having six K. <laughs> oh come on, man! Quit shooting your phone. It's, it's okay, man. I don't shoot my phone. I did one of the mobile challenge. No, you yeah. you are now forever no. phone shooter no. now no. in my head. <laughs> the G six yeah. will have six K. Or no, what's the S H one now? Yeah, they just dropped it. It does six K. Yeah. Looks super crazy. Yeah, so six K is. Kind of the newish thing. The new thing. I watched a video of a guy who is really uh, big on optics of the eye. Your eye doesn't see 8K. Mm. So he doesn't think anything should be more than 4K because it's pointless because your eye can't see that. Yeah, but your brain will know. Your brain will just be like, Cause, oh, well, because it says 6K? Then, oh, that's your, 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 brain can't, your eyes can't process anything more than 4K. <laughs> yeah, just like, it's just not that I, don't, I don't think that's actually true anymore because people, you can place an 8K TV beside a 4K and tell people, not tell people which one is which, and they should be able to see it. Really? Yeah. Hmm. That would be interesting. I yeah. have the TVs now, so you can actually. You know, it's it's yeah. uh, this is real world, no longer someone talking I, scientifically. Yeah. People can tell. I, this is something I watch. You should check it out. It's pretty cool. But, it's yeah. interesting. I was listening to a podcast, and this is about music, but you're talking about 8K and 4K. And you don't right? need it, though. No. And they were talking about that live music. We we get the best emotion out of live music, mm -hmm. and then it goes to, to vinyl. And when they came up with the MP3s and everything, mm -hmm. I got so down. and. Even though we can't hear it, pick it up with our ears, we sense it and feel it and yeah. enjoy it more. Yeah, there's a because it's it's there. And so you're talking about the same thing about 8K. We might enjoy it, like you said. Yeah. You had two screens, and people always pick the 8K. Yeah, they can feel it. well, yeah. it's a feeling. Feeling. Yeah. The and there, there's there's a company actually who's uh, I saw a Kickstarter. They're doing like a translating music to vibration so they have like little pads you place on yourself well okay and so it's kind of like speakers that rumble you 
Like, so it gives off the vibration that, okay, you might be in a big concert and with these massive speakers, well, now you feel like you're there. So we're wow. doing that for like VR experiences so mm -hmm. that you can have 360 things and you can like feel the vibration of the music or sound or, and yeah, so there's depth to something like that. Once you get past like the obvious, I'm able to see the pixels, then it starts becoming, maybe it's a feel thing. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, VR. if you had two exact same shots with all the pre-production, with all the uh, acting and everything was exactly the same and you had um, 4K and 8K right beside each other and they're exact same things, it's, I would assume the 8K is a little more immersive because you, your mind doesn't see the difference as much. We but do. head to Best Buy after this, just right? <laughs> like, yeah, but the problem is 8K is a nightmare. Um, yeah, yeah. Hard drives. <laughs> Hard drive space, uh, processor, all of that. It's, and yeah, why would you shoot 8K when most people don't actually have devices that well, have 8K except for the down convert? Exactly. And so you get smoother tones. I was going to say, well, most people are watching this stuff on their phones, which don't do yeah. <laughs> on the toilet. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. nearly uh, 8K, so. Yeah, my daughter's a laptop, and she but she watches all her Netflix on her phone instead. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense to me. Oh, no. She had a tablet too, but no, she watch her phone. Yeah, just convenience. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah, that's that's it. Right, I was watching us. I gotta get her name wrong. Billie Eilish, she's mm -hmm. a yeah. singer, right? Yeah. Uh, Rain Wilson from The Office. Apparently, she's a huge Office fan. I thought he went and did an interview with her, and she's talking about how she's a big Office fan. She watches all the time in her bedroom. In her bedroom, on her bed, her headboard, she had her phone. Has to play for her phone. It's that she watches the office on her phone in her bed, not a big screen TV. Her phone. I thought it made no sense. Wow, her eyes must be incredible. Like, to be able to see, like, <laughs> that would be it so made bad. no sense. Anyway, so that's why. Yeah, it's 2020 now. So a little different topic. Oh, you go ahead. Oh, uh, I've already asked questions. So. Oh, okay. So um, I'm trying to settle on an edit suite. What are you guys using? What's the comparison between this three or four gigas ones out there? Oh man, I'm, what, what I'm are we using, all using? I'm using Final Cut. I use Adobe. Final Cut X? Yeah, Final Cut X. Sorry, <laughs> I used to be a Final Cut guy. I used to until I went to X. I was yeah, like, and I curb kicked it so fast. But when did you see it? I, when I first launched. Okay. And uh, my buddy, That's what my buddy Derek, sense. which some people know who Derek is, worked with it for a year, and then he finally went, he curb kicked it too. I, I give it. What are you using now? I use Premiere Pro. Oh, okay. You use what? I'm uh, sorry, Premiere Pro, the Adobe Creative Suite. Yeah, it's a disaster. Oh, yeah, Premiere Pro. Money, I've but... just been looking into that. Has anybody had any experience with the Corel? Uh, not for years. But I do, but I don't know what I'm doing, so. But it all depends, <laughs> it all depends what you're doing. Really, it all depends on what you're doing. If you're, if you're just a, a learning, the beginning stages, you want to learn how to walk before you run. Like, uh, Premiere Pro might be an overkill. I, Final Cut, I know Final Cut Pro X, when it first came out, was designed for more of a consumer-based thing. They changed from Final Pro. Yeah, it has all the functionality now. Oh, does it? Yeah. So I did the transition. I worked professionally, not professionally, it was my first couple of years of making videos, but I was being paid to produce videos that I was editing in iMovie. So, oh, wow, yeah. you really don't need to get professional software until you're at a point where you need to like start adding complicated keyframing or like, I don't know. Oh. And if, if I was doing something right now, not professionally, I just use uh, DaVinci. Yeah. Mm. So in terms of transport, I heard of that one. Okay, so let's, let's for... say you're working with somebody who's using a different one. Which one is the best, most agreeable to working with somebody else's uh, processed product? Like, I don't think iMac will do anything with anybody else's, but is Premiere, is it? Uh, Premiere is pretty universal. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 everyone. Everyone. it's pretty it's big now. It's not, like, I would still like the big, big one. Yeah. That a lot of films use, but Premiere is gaining a lot of grounds yeah. in the industry. Um, Final Cut Pro lost a lot of 
its clientele when it went through the so change. But I haven't seen it since they, they made yeah, the changes. Well, they never let you bring yeah. in somebody's work that was done. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, it, really it basically, happened. it yeah. sucks in any type of format, really, and it just makes it work. Oh, okay. So basically, you can have all different frame rates. You can have yeah. PAL, you can have yeah. NTSC, you can have 30 frames, 24 frames, 60 frames. And whatever your sequence settings is, it'll just make everything work. And then you, that's normally on a Windows I, platform? Uh, it'd no, be Mac. either or. Either one. We, we, we've been using Mac forever. Yeah. And we just recently, I literally this week, just got a brand new PC set up. So, yeah. yeah, I've seen a lot of people moving away from Adobe because of the subscription model. Yeah. It's, um, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, because I'm still on a student plan what, and I'm paying. Uh, the subscription model, so Adobe moved over to a monthly subscription, so instead of owning the software, you're now subs uh, paying a monthly fee. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so I know a lot of people who are moving from Premiere trying to move over to, you know, if they're not Final Cut guys, they're Da Vinci. moving over da to DaVinci da because yeah. it's both yeah. cheap, you can buy it outright, relatively cheap, mm -hmm. yeah. 300 US. Or you, or you can buy a camera and get it with it, or you can just use the free version, which does most of the functions unless you're yeah. doing really complex things. Uh, yeah. Or using Gopher. The, or I think Vegas. the overarching thing though is it really doesn't matter too much whatever works for you. Like if you have a money crunch, just use iMovie or DaVinci, the free version. Mm -hmm. And if you're like wanting to be more technical, Adobe or Final Cut X will yeah. probably do Absolutely, what you need. yeah. Yeah, I've been yeah. like. Do they change the workflow for Final Cut Pro X? Yeah, the workflow is really simple. Um, and it's fast as hell. It's, that's the problem. problem. I tried doing DaVinci for my basic um, cutting mm -hmm. and organizing and keyboarding and all these things. And Final Cut just slays it speed wise. So much faster. Like, I was yeah. doing things like 10 times slower. Literally. I would try and do something, and it's just not nearly as fast. The magnetic timeline, all these things. It's yeah, so it makes much a big faster. difference. And sure. Yeah, the problem is when I first tried Final Cut X, when it first came out, I was working on it and it was painful to try and do unlearn, like yeah, yeah. unlearn the old ways of, all the of editing. Hotkeys. So all the hotkeys, the way things moved and everything just was the basic really was painful. Yeah. Um, yeah. But now, but people know, that I know and I've kind of got used to the changes and that they've added in all the functionality that they didn't have in the beginning. How much it cost now? 400. Oh, so still, it's still relatively cheap. So I bought it once <coughs> for when it first came out, which was cheap, 99 bucks or something. Yeah, really? yeah that's wild. When I, so when, but that was when it just came out. So I, you know, was for kind of the beta tester. Yeah. And so I, I paid a, a small amount and it's always, I've never had to pay for it again. Yeah, that's smart. That's really good. Like, one thing I was working with volunteers and people coming through, a lot of people said before Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Pro Studio, people said, oh, it's so complicated, yeah. so hard, so, but Final Cut Pro X, it's so easy. So a lot of people who didn't know how to, who were very beginner, thought Final Cut Pro X was really, really easy. I, I thought it was, yeah, I never used iMovie much, but to me it looked like a, a glorified iMovie. It but, very much was. And so, it was, yeah. and so it, 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 people who didn't know how to edit, I was just learning, found it very, very easy to use. Final yeah. Cut? Final Cut Pro X. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I can't, I cannot think, I cannot think file management like Mac thinks file management. I just get lost all the time. Things get lost. See, it's I, crazy. I just switched to PC and I'm going, oh man, this is a mess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, no, no, well, just because no. we had to, again, I, it's not my computer, it's Work's computer, and the, the Work decided they're not buying any more Macs because it's yeah. too expensive. Yeah, and so, they're all going, crazy right now. Brand new computer, 64 gigs of RAM. It's like, it's, it's got amazing processor. It's crashed 15 times yeah, today on me. I, I, I tried doing Hackintoshes oh, because man. I wanted a cheaper, cheaper uh, thing so I could actually have a faster yeah. processor, faster graphics card, and nope, the crashes, uh, I'm like, nope, we can't do this on professional projects. This is too painful. It's crashing on me and I need a very stable system and so that's when I got my Mac Pro trash can. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so and it's been stable. But you're like anything's like really they're all saying suggestions like all that stuff's good. It's whatever yeah. works for you they can figure out and well, use easily. I, I found Corral uh, really 
I mean, it takes like my brain takes. Yeah, well, that's just it, right? Like, yeah. I know what works. Yeah. yeah, what's good for you. We had some people before volunteers using Corel that they worked really well from. So, yeah. like, whatever works. But I'm looking at Premiere right now because it's highly recommended. So I was just wondering yeah. about that. Premiere, it, like, it can be complicated for some people. I think I find it super annoying. I use it every day, but I find it super annoying. Super what? Annoying. Really? Yeah, like there, it's just kind of overcomplicated in a number of ways. Like there's one, for example, to manipulate the levels of audio yeah. on an audio track. Yeah. You have to go and search for a thing called dynamic processing. And then you have to take that and drag it onto the audio clip. <coughs> and then you have to go into it and go to the edit tab and then open it and then go over to custom. And then you have to take it and manually adjust this in the audio thing. It's like, where's I press what the, the hell is that? What are you doing? <laughs> or, or you can take it and you can drag up the bar, but it only goes up to plus 6 dB. Uh, so if you need to increase it higher than that, you have to do this like super over the top convoluted process where you go on Mac and you're just like, doink. Like, uh, uh, I don't know. So I, I would just choose whatever works. We have two different workflows entirely. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's specifically just to make it go higher than six, because that's what you can do within just like the regular. So you do a lot of sound editing in your work. Do you do go over six? No, I, I have people who critique me on YouTube, and yeah. that's. <laughs> So many people are like, your music's too loud. <laughs> your voice is too quiet. Or your voice is too loud. It's uh, like every person who's ever held a camera critiques yeah. what you do. They're all experts, aren't they? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they all are. Every single one of them. Everybody has an opinion. That's great with social media now. Everybody has an opinion. So here's a question leading into it. So people are giving you critiques, and I'm curious. This and all three of you maybe talk about your learning process. Like, how did you start, and how have you been learning to get to where you are now? Whoa, that's gonna be very different, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's start with Jim. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good choice. <laughs> I know. <laughs> all right. How do I start? Yeah. Um, start creating. You know, start shooting. No, but how did Sorry. you? How did you? Like, yeah. like, like, how did I actually start? Yeah, like how did you I, get into this? My I, I went to a small guys. little film, defunct film school for over the summer, and <laughs> got an introduction from that, and came out kind of with the conclusion that I have to teach myself things. Is that the Nava Film Group or Film School? Yeah. And so, so. so that gave me the the concept that I have to actually teach myself things, and that no matter where I go, it's even in university, it's oh, I can take classes, do this, do that. No, it's you just have to teach yourself, yeah, perfect. and learn through trial and error. Um, yeah, so I, I so you're basically self taught, yeah. Okay, what, what about you? I'm curious now. All right, so a long time ago, <laughs> <laughs> oh well, 1990, right? Like, you gotta think, like, how old are you? I'm 26. How old are you? Thirty-two. I'm forty-seven. So what I when I was young, what you guys, what people can experience nowadays, like my kids can experience, like you couldn't shoot or edit anything back when I was a kid. Right. right. Cameras were too expensive. Editing was like you not, not scissors possible. And like... Well, that's if you're using film, right? So what I did, my parents bought a brand new video camera because we're moving from Ontario to Yellowknife. So we bought, we bought a camera to do to document the whole entire trip. So this camera had a flying erase head in it. Anybody know what a flying erase head is? No. Okay, so basically you take a tape, a, a VCR, a, a VHS, right? You put it in to your camera, you record, press record, you record the whole thing black. So you basically, you put down control track. Because this is before time code, it's control track. It's a signal in. Yeah. You, you put a VHS in your machine, press play, and the numbers count. That's control track. It's counting up the. the Dude, so, this is crazy. Oh, this, 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 right. You're talking about the beginning. This is the beginning. So, <laughs> in the beginning. So, from there, this camera with a flying erase head, once you yeah. put a control track on, I can now do video and audio edit separately. I have two tracks of audio and video. This is how Robert Rodriguez edited El Mariachi, um, mm -hmm. the trailer and yeah. stuff like that. But then when he, when he was, so, basically, what I would do is I'd put the. VHS tape into the VHS VCR, and you you rewind it. So you okay? You press, you press play on your, your your video camera, video camera which had a flying erase head in it. Yeah. So you connect with RCA cables. You press play. Okay, here's black, black. I go go like ten seconds in. Okay, boom, pause. You press pause. 
Then what I do is I rewind it. Okay, first I want to lay down some music tracks. So I'll put my, I'll hook up my, my cassette tape um, machine in with RCAs, and I press play, uh, and I press record, uh, I press audio one, and I go unpause. So it lay down the track of music. Okay. So you're editing using a VCR yes. and a TV yes. and your camera. <laughs> no, yes, exactly, yes. Yeah. So we'll from there. Now we use now okay, now I put my, so I put a music bed. I want to cut some visuals of us traveling to a music bed. So now I rewind the VCR. Okay, oh here's a shot where it's a cool we're driving by and there's uh, there's a camel. It's not a camel, let's say it's a, it's a thrasher. <laughs> yeah, garden thrasher, my mom like garden thrasher. Yeah, it's a so, sketch one. <laughs> and so I rewind it, I press play. You wait, you wait, you wait, you wait. You, so you press, now I want to do a video insert. So I press video, and so I wait, I have the pause, it's pause, and boom. <laughs> so you're sitting in and out. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Okay, it's past, okay, stop, rewind on the camera, press play, and boom, I want to cut right here. So I, so I press pause, so now you press the video button again, rewind to the next shot, here's the next shot of me going blah in the back. So rewind and press play and boom! That's how I went to edit. Wow. <laughs> how old were you? I was 18. 18? But how did you, how did you even become interested in doing all well, that? Well, you spent hours upon hours. Like, editing takes a long time, you admit, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is like, you have to add 15 times to that, right? So yeah. I started. I started shooting little skits and editing like this. So I'd have yeah. music track, I'd do sound effects in one track, and, and I got pretty good. I'd make all these action movies and stuff like that. Yeah. And so I said, oh, I really like editing. So from there, I decided to apply, I went to States. I, I, I went there to be an editor, and I learned how to shoot and stuff like that. Wow. And then, so when I graduated, I got a job at Shaw TV. This is interesting. So there's no digital cameras. There's, yeah. it, it's tape. It was three-quarter tape. Three-quarter tape's like this big. Like it was like this big, it's how big the kit cassette was for 30 minutes. You had, so you had a camera with a camera cable attached to a big, huge VCR. It's a massive pack like this that probably weighed 15 pounds. <laughs> so you put it over your shoulder and you walk around with a big, huge, heavy camera and you shoot a whole bunch of stuff on that and then you edit tape to tape. So you had your, oh. you had your player tape, your record tape, you had your control panel, and it's all no, no time code. This is three quarter days. This is before this was in beta. This is three quarter. And then basically the end point, out point, and you press preview. Okay, hey, look pretty good and edit. <laughs> so once you went through, you're like, oh, you know what? The beginning, I don't like that. Well, guess what? You can't go back and fix it. Like, it, it, you have to, okay, I'll go back. So it's like first time. Like, you got to nail it, like, first time. Yes. Do they now <laughs> you shoot exclusively on a pixel? It's really one of the first time I use it to shoot that film. That's amazing. But, so that's how I started. I, so <laughs> when you're doing tape to tape, you really learn that I like editing. So now the digital world, oh, yeah, it's like oh, it's easy. It's so easy. Yeah. Like my kids, I like I feel like I have to like smack my kids down with like like stupid things just so they can learn how to do yeah. stuff. Oh man, kids right? got it so easy nowadays. Absolutely. Even, even having to just like digitize. Tapes. Oh, yeah, just yeah, the that, fact that, that you don't have to do that was a pain. Shit. Like uh, 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah, like uh, I was in school, I graduated from school. Avid just released their first nonlinear editing system. <laughs> I just graduated and got the school got it. So oh, digital yes. editing didn't it didn't exist until that point in time. And so that's why I'm super happy that digital editing started <laughs> and that it wasn't too long before I got to kick tape. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. So like you started editing films like the equivalent is like somebody started being a mechanic when like Henry Ford yes. invented one. Just like that. <laughs> yes, just like that. Yes. The dawn of time. <laughs> I did videotape. That's what I worked like on. Like the asteroid had landed like a couple weeks earlier. <laughs> yeah. and, then and, then, and then next week I was editing the yeah, tape. You're in there going, wow, I hope the fires stop. And like, so like a VCR, like those things were like thirty thousand dollars. Like so, no one had them at home. Yeah. Like no one should. Like what we can do now is like, I had to get stuff on my phone. Like yeah. I was shooting for work, I was shooting time lapse, and I shot myself doing the whole thing of me shooting time lapse, mm -hmm. and I edited it for work for social media. Like I did all my phone. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. It's, like the, the, the young generation today, they don't know what suffering is. <laughs> they don't know what suffering is. <laughs> no clue. Like we just sit down. Like I spent.
spend five hours and I added one minute of content through this tape to tape VCR rewinding. Oh my god, and then Casey and I said I edited a 10 minute vlog every single day for 800 days. Wow. <laughs> 800 days? 800 days. He made 800 minutes, no, 8,000 minutes of content in 800 days. Not tape to tape. That's Not tape to tape. <laughs> Holy smokes, that's crazy. You should mic drop now. You just. <laughs> well, I just said it was totally different. My beginnings were totally different than your yeah. beginnings. Yes. Uh, so, I learned watching YouTube videos. <laughs> 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 like, legit, yeah. Um, no, I, I went to acting school, so I went to Capilano University in North Bend. And there I like worked with filmmakers, so I saw like people who had parents with a lot of money who were willing to send them to film school. They got sent to Capilano University, which is like probably one of the most prestigious film schools in Vancouver. And they had like full on studios and like Ari cameras and huge lighting setups and green screens. Like they filmed Hollywood films at the school where I was in short films and shit. And so there I saw what was out there and I was like, well, there's no way in hell I'm ever gonna be able to learn how to do that. And so I went off and tried to be an actor and failed and then went to school again for environmental studies and started making sort of like small skits and stuff. And I was like, oh, everybody in the real world is impressed by like the simple videos that I can make with like a little DSLR. And I was like, hmm, interesting. And then I made a, a video for a course and the university shared it and it got like 3000 views online. And I was like, I'm famous now. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, I, I right from that point, I was like, okay, so I like, I can do this. Like it's, it's not, I'm not like that good, like what they were doing, but I can like do it. And uh, my mother-in-law now uh, works at VIU and she had this grant project that she was filming. And it's just like teachers talking about teaching. And she was like, I'll pay you to make a video. Why don't you make a video for this thing? I saw your video on the internet. Why don't you make me one of those for my conference? And that's like, that was it. Like I got this one gig and I made like 200 bucks and I went out and shot interviews and I'm like Googling like how to film an interview. And I'm like, okay, like this thing, tripods, cool. And yeah, and then like from that point on, I just like started making short videos and then I did the wedding circuit. Oh, yes. uh, which uh, is a formative experience uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah I kind of went through the freelance world and then two years ago I started the YouTube channel and then that became how I basically because like I was making probably a video every month for the first little while and then I got a little bit more serious and then when I started the YouTube channel I was like I'm gonna make a video every week and then that from the time I started the YouTube channel to the first year in I was like I had made 400 times the amount of videos, and so my skills just went up considerably, and then I started getting work from other things, and yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's kind of just turned into what it is now. And I apologize, when I went ooh for wedding videos, I did that because I used to do oh, it too. Well, yeah. I used to do it too, so I'm not trying to... But everybody who's ever done weddings yeah. does that exact snap. Well, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I was trying to disrespect it. It's a, it's a form and people do it and they do a really good job that I just don't miss it. <laughs> no, no, no. Anyone who has done it and no longer does it is not dying to get no. back in. Like, oh, I sure want to do a wedding video. Oh, man. I had a friend at work who oh, you do a wedding? I want you, your stuff's so good, I want you to do a wedding. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> You're like, I'm dead. <laughs> I said, I'll shoot it, but I won't edit it. I will not edit it. Oh, yeah, no, man. that's true. If you can hand off the edit, that's... Oh, I did. It took a year. But what could be done? I, I told you. It's not my job. Your daughter's in the basement like, I don't know how to edit that. <laughs> just keep doing it. <laughs> Your inches settings are all wrong. <laughs> what are they teaching you in school nowadays? <laughs> Invert the color, invert the color. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't even created this honey. Come on. This is our special day. Mm -hmm. This is a 24 hour return. Same <laughs> 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 the edit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you celebrate your anniversary of your wedding video. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 oh, 
that's great. All right, we'll do another 10 minutes of this. So if anyone's got questions, oh, yeah. I'm in now. Yeah. Any real things you need to ask? Mm -hmm. What are your favorite genres to shoot and what motivates you to choose your films? That's a good question. Jesus. <laughs> I can go first. Yeah. I've done I've done seven short films now, and every genre is a little bit different. I'm a big fan of action comedy. Really big fan of action comedy. So I like doing that. Again, it's really hard to do with no budget, <laughs> but I've done a few. Um, I, I do like I do like scary movies. So I've <clears throat> tried a couple of scary movies where or kind of creepy ones. And I, I like die. Yeah. The, all my movies, yes. Yeah. All my movies. Ah, so yeah. so or I, they don't always die, or when somebody's trying to kill them. Yeah. <laughs> I did make a movie that did really well, and a lot of people have seen it. It's called Toy Toy Recall, where a guy went to a garage sale and all the toys came alive and tried killing him. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was really good. Yeah. Did so, he die? No, no, I said, uh, they either die or somebody's trying to kill okay. somebody. Not everybody always dies. <laughs> so I think that's how you select your film. You, you think of a scenario where a person is being killed or potentially killed. Yes. yes. And you're like, here we go, it's a film. My first one was called Death Point, and there's a lot of killing in that one. <laughs> <laughs> the whole, every character has guns, and everything's getting shot. I mean, but the thing is, the comedy, everything you shoot somebody, like, oh. It's like, Oh, well. So I should really make sure I don't get you from a wedding video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. It could be a themed wedding. What if, what if a bride comes up to you and she's like, oh my god, I'm so, I like, love your stuff. Um, my husband and I are going to get married and also we want it to be like a double murder <laughs> like, <laughs> at our wedding video. Can you do that? Would you do it? I say I don't do weddings anymore. <laughs> but even with the aspect of potential death? <laughs> it's like, it's like legitimately. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> if I could recreate something like a Kill Bill wedding scene, maybe that'd be kind of fun to do. Yes, that'd be kind of fun. Okay, to do. Well, all right, all right. But then as long as it's like toying out a wedding, it's like something more than that. Maybe, but yeah. would you? Oh, if there was murder involved. Not real murder. Oh, <laughs> not real murder. Come oh, on. No. Uh, would I do a wedding again? Yeah. Oof. Uh, no, probably not. It would. It would have to be a lot of money. And at that point, I'd be like, "Look, twenty thousand dollars is way too much for a wedding video." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you um, price your price so high. Yeah. Like I'm just like, you can put a mortgage on a house for this. <laughs> well, you know, ask me. Like, I got two hundred dollars. That enough? Like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's, is that what they usually say? Uh, you have. You know, right. yeah, yeah. I have done. Wedding videos because I can't. I don't do Saturdays, so. <laughs> okay, wait. So, what, what, how do you choose your films? Yeah, how do you choose your films? Uh, client work and whether I actually can get behind the concept, mm. right? So, there's you know certain client projects that I won't do, but yeah. Otherwise, if it's a an actual message that I'm either neutral for, or totally game for it. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of projects. I've done a bunch of uh, First Nations projects. Um, some of them dealing with land codes and helping to kind of regain uh, self-governance. So yeah. you know, and so I'm totally for everyone having the ability to govern their own lives and have more autonomy over their own local areas. And so, yeah, if I can get a project where I'm really in it, you know, just there's an, an ethic to it that I yeah. really like, then mm -hmm. I will definitely choose that. And if there's conflicting projects, I'll choose, you know, that one where I like the ethic over the other. Mm -hmm. So what's like your, your like email response? What's the dollar amount when somebody says, hey, I want you to film insert blank thing that you don't want to do. What's the dollar amount that you send back to them when you just like don't want to do it and you just give them that highball rate that if they said yes, you're like, make any money, yes, money. <laughs> <laughs> Typically, I would just, I would talk about my schedule being filled. Right. And yeah. I, w I would have someone else I would recommend. You know, right. so I'm, I'll just shift their attention. Okay, that's good. Yeah, you like divert them to some someone unlucky. else who will appreciate it. Slide a hand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah because just, I'll I'll say there's someone who that concept or that idea, that's it's, that's it's going to be their thing. 
And so why would they want me when it's not my thing? That's when I true. can't put my full creative energies towards this. Yeah. See, that's someone else will should benefit from that. So that's right. They see work. You working with a budget. You're working with a budget. I guess somebody like I don't work with a budget. Cause, like my like my films are my films. The, the I do it independently, with no budget. My documentaries are I do for work. That's something totally different, right? Where like I just choose things that I'm interested in. If because if like you're like you're saying, if you don't believe in it, yeah. it's not going to work, right? It's the same as me. So if I can't buy into the story, then I can't execute it, right? If I don't believe in it, if I don't, I can't see. And I always try to pick stuff that that's more entertaining because there's people who do the serious stuff really well. I'm I'm just not a serious type of guy. Like so, I will do stuff that I like to make people laugh, and so I always try and focus on stuff that I think will get some kind of entertainment out mm -hmm. of it, and information. So that's what I do when I'm not doing my own personal movies for work. When I make my docs, that's what I, I steer towards. So I never have to worry about dollar value. I go, mm, I don't see how I this is going to work. I I walk away from it. And I just do whatever I. Because you have like payroll that you're a part of. Yes, yeah, so that's my job. Like I, I get paid. I, I do my forty hours a week, or way more. And, <laughs> and, I, and we pick stories. We try to pick character character driven stories that usually are good or just positive kind of messages, sort of thing. Yeah. Like you know, like we did the one with the the, the, the bear one, right? And we also yeah. did the one with the like that, that these people going viral with doing wedding. Yeah, that's, that's like cool. those are like yeah. pretty big stories and, and when I did a pre-interview with Todd and his wife like the all the backstory of how everything led up to this thing I was like what yeah. wow, that's that's that's, that's cool. great yeah so that's you know that's I did it because I thought it was funny and amusing I knew I could tell the story visually so that's how I so how does the, the security of having that established you know here's your own you know yeah, like you but your, your own everything. payroll how, how does that affect and it, change well again things? when you have a payroll it changes everything too because I just don't make documentaries like yeah. we have to train volunteers. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody's looking for more work, more to learn how to use cameras and editing. You guys can volunteer with us here at Shot Spotlight. But anyway, that's another plug. But so there's many other things that we, we have to do, like for the company that people tell us we have to yeah, do. Right. So you know, it's not free game. You do whatever you want, but it's nice. That's why I haven't left. Yeah. I've been offered to go other places, but I do like the freedom I get. I, yeah, I, I get the projects I want to do sometimes. Like sometimes you have to do something you don't want to do, but majority of the time in my 24 years almost with this company, mm -hmm. I've had a lot of freedom. And yeah. I've advanced because when I first started, yeah. when I got graduated from college, I said, I'm never going to direct anything. Why would anybody direct, like just shoot me, right? right? But now with my experience, I, I was able to learn everything. Like I started off as an editor, I learned how to shoot from editing. Then I learned how to direct from doing that stuff. And then right, right. I, I've learned so much now. I can do any position there is in television now because of that freedom. So I just love. It's a bit. It's nice that I always have my paycheck coming in every two weeks. Yeah, that's right. Nice. I roof over my head. I don't have to worry about finding the next project. Right. So, but again, or corporate, corporate finances or all those things. Yeah, seriously. But you know, but again, you like you have a budget. You spend money on your project. You spend money. I get no budget. Like I can't go rent a a, a, a dolly. I can't rent. Uh, get somebody to pay for lighting. I have the equipment I have. That's all I have. Right. So you make the best of what you got, right? So again, I, I can do stuff, but I can spend no money making I'm, it. I'm realizing now that the reason why I chose back to your question, the things is like pretty, like as a person who makes YouTube videos, basically, if you are a YouTuber, you've said very publicly, I want to make videos <laughs> that feature my face, um, <laughs> which is like not wrong. Like I have a pretty huge ego. I went to acting school. Like it should have been clear from the beginning. Um, but uh, the only way that I could feel good about that is if I like tied it to something that I felt was like important beyond me just. You know, that's having, the environmental aspect. and that's the environmental angle. Yeah. So my YouTube channel is all about uh, how you can save save the planet. And so I have this whole kind of like uh, environmental focus mm -hmm. that I can direct my energy towards, so that the whole thing doesn't feel quite like a self serving ego show. Yeah. yeah. I can. Yeah. You know, this is narcissism live. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Like it's still like I'm still there. Like it's my show. But you know, there is a purpose. Uh, beyond just me, so so guided narcissism, like Exa yeah, 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 practical narcissism, practical. Yes. 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 sustainable narcissism, yes. 
that's, yeah. that's a whole other channel. And so you could talk about that too. How to be a narcissist, but <laughs> so you're just building a big alibi for anybody. Right? Exactly. It's not about me. It's about the environment. Exactly. Like if people ask, so but like, a little bit about me. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly yeah. environment. Trying to save the world. Yeah. yeah. The soft redirect. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's good. Oh. See, Dude, that's we're learning fun. things here. I hope you're learning things. <laughs> soft redirect. I'm gonna use that at work. Yeah. Soft redirect. It does sound mild. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Um, anything else that we need to talk about? Is there like priorities? Yeah, any other questions? Helps. Otherwise, we can wrap it up. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah.